but before I got to her today, I thought I better do an update because uh, it's been about three weeks and just been fighting winter, to be honest. Just I had to get ahead of everything because otherwise it was just going to come unspooled and I never would have got the heat in or the electricity in, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, first off, you, I, the last video I had was on the mezzanine and I got it all in now, as you can see. Uh, I got all the legs in where they're supposed to be because that's super important for the weight loading. Um, it's nailed into the wall. Uh, this is in pieces because I'm in the middle of cleaning it. Uh, let's go check out... Uh, I designed these stairs using the old... Ooh, get out of there, finger. Using the old garage door hardware. I just hacked off the end where it, you know, where it curbs down. I uh, just hacked it off because it had these extra supports in there to make it a little stiffer for when it's in the roof. And I figured it would easily take the weight of a few two by fours compared to the weight it's taking before. Uh, yeah, reuse some old hinges and the whole thing slides in and up into there. Uh, I'll show you in a minute though, because I only want to lift it once because it is heavy. The mezzanine is getting good use. Oh yes, transmission oil for the, for old Bethany. So the mezzanine, one together, so good, no issues. It uh, should take a ton of weight. They're two by tens, uh, quadruple, makeup beam all the way along with the right posts. Each one of those posts is rated for 26,000 pounds, which is way more weight than it will ever be up here. But it's good to know we could throw a motor up here and not have to not sweat it, not sweat it at all. So now we're gonna go outside <laughs> and look at what I've been uh, battling to get into the, to get into the, look at it out here. It's trash. Well, it's actually really nice. I really like it. Um, but it does not make, ooh, I want to go to the other side because this side's really tight. It does not make doing trenching easy. Why trenching? Trenching because the Haas needs electricity and Lucas needs heat. So I had to trench all the way from here, all the way over to there. There, that's better. I'm gonna be outside talking about this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got a little sticky over here to show you. Oh, I wasn't for you. So, I got, woo! You gonna focus on that for me, boop. So I did the power at, six, uh, at 36 inches and the gas above that with 12 inches of dirt and then above that, I did the communications conduit just a, you know, just a few inches and then I covered that with another 14 inches of dirt. So all three in a row, but as I was putting that dirt in, it was starting to freeze and it was, get, it was just such a pain. I actually wrapped the dirt in a nice big blanket overnight to keep it warm and keep the snow off it, which helped a bit. I'd have to chip through maybe about an inch of crust and then everything inside was still really warm. So throwing it to the ground wasn't really too, too bad. I needed power for the Haas and I needed heat for Mr. Lucas. And right as I started trenching, there was a, a, like a storm warning. It was supposed to be minus 10, like right away. And I had to get all of that stuff in the ground before the ground froze and man, what a pain. So I, the trencher was a never used one. It was, it was quite the learning curve. I used it to trench all the way over. And then once I got over, flipped it around and trenched it back. And it went pretty smoothly. The machine ran out of oil halfway. The real problem though was getting that dirt, that hot, that warm dirt back in the hole before it froze and it, like I said, minus 10 degrees Celsius. I don't think it really matters which one. It's freezing time. I packed it pretty good, but I'm just a dude with a, a big heavy post and I wouldn't even put it at probably 20% real compaction if you measured it. Um, but I'll deal with that in the spring. I got all the bricks back in and everything cleaned up and there was no point in filming all that because who wants to me see me do yard work? So then, so then we're done, right? I got all that done and I came back inside and the first thing I did was I needed to build my rotary converter. 
Uh, I'll go through this in a few days. So then, my rotary converter. So this, the, before I even get into it, I'm gonna say there was a lot of discussion on the internet about how big of a rotary converter you need. I'm not gonna get into all the math that I did, but I figured a 15 horse, four, eight, 15 horsepower Haas would actually be fine. Uh, everybody says you need a 30 horsepower, double the horsepower for CNC. Uh, I don't know where those rules of thumb came from. When I did the math, this should be okay. So I got a 15 horse Baldor motor. It uh, puts out 40 amps per phase. So this is a three phase motor. This is the house power coming in. This is the power going to this motor. And then this is the power coming from the Haas in. And like I said, there's a lot, a lot, a lot going on here right now. So I'm not gonna explain everything that's going on here because I'm gonna shoot a video just on this. Probably tomorrow I make the final enclosure and I'll show you some test numbers and everything. But you know what they say, talk is cheap. So let's fire this bitch up. Air compressor's on. Are you ready? Hey, uh, let's just do it. Ready? Oh, oh, listen to that smoothness. Smooth. Um, yeah, now the Haas, hey? Oh, oh, what? Oh, what? The fucking works? What? Oh, no, oh. Ah, uh, you don't need to see the screen. Oh! Oh, it's moving, bitch! Oh, look, it's moving up! What's happening? Oh, no! It's, uh, that zero shit takes a minute, though, eh? Boop. It's in pieces because I took off all the sheet metal. Whatever they were cutting before has this, this, like, this fiber in it that just makes you really itchy. Probably fiberglass or some kind of composite. Lots of like white plastic, like that gel coat that they sometimes use on it. Uh, oh, there we go. So she's moving good. Check this out though. Oh wait, will it let me do it with the door open? I don't remember now. Oh, nope. three times. 
So I did take some 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 meaty cuts. I'll uh, throw the Instagram video of the actual first cut here. Yeah, so it sprayed, uh, sp sprayed shit pretty good. It uh, took a meaty, meaty cut. That's a half inch four flute. Uh, the one that broke it, I did a 50% step over. And man, it was like, it was deflecting on this pass and that was like a 40% step over. And then this 50. Uh, these lines almost look like it grabbed, but I think it broke really early. And the weird thing though, is that it broke. Up inside of there, yeah, it like snap right where the uh, the flat is for the the mill for like a milling a milling tool holder. Look at that! Ooh, mm, look at that! Snappy. So everything went really successfully. I'm gonna get to work right now. That's all for the update. Mm, uh, it's gonna be. A what am I gonna do right now? Oh, I gotta pull all the way covers off and clean them underneath. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. So much more to come, <laughs> especially now that the, the hoss is on. I just gotta get it cleaned up. Uh, converter, like I said, pumping good. Lots of amps left. The compressor, you know, everything's working perfect. So it's now, now it's time to make some, now it's time to make some parts.